what's going on guys it's the 90s baby gamer bringing you another video and for this video i'm going to show you guys how to better optimize the pcsx2 emulator on your rig now chances are if you click this video you clicked it because you have a budget rig and you want to see what the best settings are for you when it comes to running this emulator now what is the pcsx2 emulator it's the top ps2 emulator right now there are other emulators out there um actually i think there's only one that really matters in terms of being the alternative for the PCSX2 and that's the play emulator this emulator is specifically for Android devices and I think there's a Windows version as well but that emulator is new so it's nowhere near up to snuff in the future they hope to be but for now it's the PCSX2 emulator that is the go-to PlayStation 2 emulator now let me tell you guys something if you have a rig that has an extremely weak dual core CPU uh, these tips probably aren't really gonna help you when it comes to emulation you really need a CPU that's up to snuff when it comes to running these things because it takes much more of that power furthermore you may have an AMD CPU that runs extremely well on some modern games but not so much on the PlayStation 2 emulator and you may think why is that well there's better co per core performance when it comes to the Intel processor. So they're just gonna do better at running the PlayStation 2 emulator. When you look online, what do you see all over the place? i5s, i7s, and some i3 processors being used to run the PlayStation 2 emulator. So just keep that in mind. Now, I have an AMD Athlon X4860K. So, these settings do work for me on a lot of games. Now, there are just some games where you know, the, the cutscenes are just going to slow to a crawl. That's just how it's going to go. Uh, but for the most part, I've been able to play games like even Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3, you know, just perfectly fine. So, um, well, not perfectly fine. There's been obviously some stutters along the way, but it's playable. Let's just uh, leave it at that. So, here are some settings that you can use to uh, beef up uh, your performance. Now, you can just go to emulator settings here and what I'm going to show you is speed hacks. Now, I do believe that when you first uh, start the emulator, actually it is because I honestly, I haven't been using the 1.5 edition of the PlayStation 2 emulator. Uh, I'm just showcasing it here because it's the latest emulator. Obviously, I'm using 1.4 because I don't really notice that much of a difference, maybe like a three or four frame boost. But as you can see here, the settings are going to be like this. Uh, so what you want to do to increase performance is you want to uncheck preset here, right? You're going to uncheck that. And then you're going to see all these options are available to you. Now, you'd want to click this, MTVU. Now, what this does is it's going to give you speed up here. And you really need like a quad core in order to take advantage of this feature. But if you click that, it is going to give you a decent speed boost. Now. If you get out of there, right, well, you're going to want to press OK, but I just clicked out of it because I'm not going to be going back to this edition. Um, you're going to go to video settings now. You want to go to plug in settings. Now, what you're going to see here is you're going to see the renderer. And you have a lot of options here. You have DirectX 9 hardware and software and DirectX 11 hardware and software and OpenGL hardware and software. So what does this mean? Well, if you're having some performance issues, you may not want to go with the software options at all, really, because th there are some games where you'll need to run it in software mode to get rid of certain um, bugs and glitches, mostly graphical glitches, and just to run better. I know Fight Night Round 3 I had to, but my CPU simply isn't um, up to snuff to where it can get Fight Night Round 3 in software mode to 60 frames you can get it around 50 but and it is playable but obviously i'd rather play that at 60. but so what you're going to want to do is if directx 11 hardware isn't working out for you you want to try directx 9 hardware or you can try open gl hardware which is right up here and that may give you a boost in performance as well now you're going to notice the resolution here the internal resolution this is important because 3x is about 1080p uh the difference between let's say making it custom down here and leaving it at 3x native is that what the developers of the playstation 2 emulator say 
is that if you use the 3x native edition it's going to get rid of some of the graphical glitches that you may have if you just put a custom resolution and pretty much looks as good it's basically 1080p um, anything above 3x is going to cause you problems if you have a budget rig because most likely your rig just isn't going to be able to handle it so if your rig can't even handle 3x you're going to want to try 2x or the native option here which it, you know it's going to look like the original uh, PS2 graphics but you'll be able to get more performance here you can also enable HW hacks maybe make that a little bit better um, one quick note here if you're using OpenGL hardware one way that you can get rid of shadows because there's a bit of a shadow glitch when it comes to certain games you can click accurate date and you can go here and you can click the none or the basic option and you can just tinker around uh, with with those settings um but if you click on accurate date and i could have sworn there was an option here for um depth i think it was in depth something but anyway if you click those options you should get rid of any um shadow graphical glitches uh, that you may have so we're just going to click out of here and one last tip that I want to give you guys is you may notice that some of your games are at a playable state. However, the sound may be a little wonky for you. May, maybe the people talking sound a little bit drunk, if that makes sense. So you can go into the audio settings here. You can go to plugins, right? You're going to see here it's going to say synchronizing mode and it's going to say time stretch. If you click that and you click async mix and press OK, that should alleviate the problems because no matter what your frame rate are, the sound should be in line. Now, if your game is running at like nine frames per second and you use this option, uh, unfortunately, um, and it went back to time stretch. Let me go back to async mix. The game is probably going to crash. Uh, certainly the audio is going to cut out. And as it says in parentheses, break some games. So you want to make sure that your frame rate is up there. At least get it to like the 40s if it's a 60 frames per second game and so so that you can make sure that the game doesn't break all right guys that's it for the how to you know run the pcsx2 emulator a little bit better for you um if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below uh, if you like my video give it a like and if you like more of my content be sure to subscribe and